I'd like to share with you a simple technique that I use for most of my robotic bike repair procedures using a string, a ruler, and a bulldog. My name is Tristan Yen. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon based in Sydney, Australia. I've decided to show you a case that will be considered run of the mill for our robotic surgical team on any given day. This patient has severe mitral regurgitation due to ruptured cordy of the P2 segment. I believe this case illustrates a simple repair technique that is efficient and reproducible. A big part of our team's pursuit has been to continuously improve our economy of motion at all stages of the operation, and we have seen outcomes steadily improve over time. After the pericardium was opened, a purse string was placed to secure the aortic root needle. It is my preference to use a cheatwood cross clamp and anti-grade custodial cataplegia to arrest the heart for all robotic mitral cases. After the left atrium was opened through the Sondergast groove, a left atrial retractor was positioned. I usually don't go behind the oblique sinus, as I generally find this extended left atrial incision is adequate for the majority of cases. Here I was performing a mitral valve analysis, which clearly demonstrated rupture cordy from the P2 segment. In addition, you may appreciate from the visual cues that the P1 segment was tethered down with some fibrosis and calcification involving the subalveolar apparatus. There was also a cleft between the P1 and P2 segments. The robotic neocord implantation technique demonstrated in this case involves three simple steps using a string, a ruler, and a bulldog on a leash. Step one, a string is a CV4 Gore-Tex suture. I identify a sturdy papillary muscle and pass the suture through the fibrotic part of muscle in a figure eight configuration. Then I use the same needle passing through the free edge of the prolapsing segment twice. Just make sure you get good purchase of tissue so the suture won't cut through. Now pick up the other needle and also pass through the free edge in the same fashion. Often I choose to use two sets of cords to reinforce the P2 segment, but in this case I only used one set because the ruptured cordy were on the P1 side of the P2 segment. Step 2. I use a pre-made ruler on the back bench that is cut to the exact length according to the normal cordal length measured by my anesthetist on the preoperative transesophageal echo. Once the ruler is positioned between the papillary muscle and the free edge, you can adjust the height of the leaflet accordingly. Step 3. I then use a vascular bulldog clip to prevent not sliding down, while I tie the two ends of the strings together. When you tie knots, try to avoid excessive stretching on either side of the atriotomy incision. For Gore-Tex suture, I generally make 8 to 10 knots, including a couple of square knots to prevent slipping. In this case, I also decided to close the cleft between the P1 and P2 segments. Because P1 segment was held down by the calcified subalveolar apparatus and P2 was prolapsing. The cleft was closed with fibro running protein suture back and forth. I don't usually perform the saline injection test until the end. You may also use pre-measured neural cords such as the cordex loops, but I just find this way of cordal implantation quite simple and the robotic instrument movements are predominantly in the left atrium rather than in the ventricle. Next is placing the mitral aneuploplasty sutures. I do this the same way as I would do in an open approach or a thoracoscopic approach, using 
interrupted Taekwon switches. Here we can appreciate calcification along the P1 segment of the annulus. When I come around to the anterior annulus, I tend to use my left hand to stitch to avoid overstretching on the atrial wall. The robotic platform enables surgeons to operate ambidextrously, which is extremely convenient indeed. After the annular plastic suture placement, I usually scrub in now and parachute annular plastic ring by myself. For all robotic cases, I operate with a surgical assistant, not another cardiac surgeon, so that I take control of all the key steps of the procedure. I use core knots to secure the ring in position. Now I do the saline injection test. If the ventricle distends, the chances are your mitral repair is going to work. I use two layers of 3 0 running protein suture to close the left atrium. This is the time you can practice suturing with both hands up and down the atriotomy incision. Generally speaking, if you fully understand the structural cause of mitral regurgitation, trust your anesthetist with preoperative echo measurements, and then you follow the playbook and fix the mechanical problem accordingly you are just going to get a robust mitral valve repair result. Also, in my opinion, you have a better chance to do so with robotic approach because of its unparalleled 3D visualization and enhanced bimanual telemanipulation. Here I scrubbed in for the final time. The cross clamp time for this procedure was 78 minutes. Now is the moment of truth. There was no residual mitral regurgitation. I believe the key for a successful robotic program is to have a well-functioning, synchronized surgical team that focuses on the economy of motion in all aspects of the procedure. Finally, I would like to take the opportunity to thank our robotic team and my anesthetic colleagues and friends whom I hold in high esteem. Thank you for your kind and focused attention.